Over the past few months, I have been having a damn good time with the Eri Pro SS. In fact, this bike is so good out of the box, I haven't really even thought about modifying it yet. However, Vora Motors have sent me this, the EBMX 9000 controller, and it is amazing the difference that one upgrade like this makes to the whole bike. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you guys some before footage with the stock controller, show you some of the metrics with that, as well as kind of walk you through the whole story of getting this thing installed, because it was quite a journey, had quite a lot of help, uh, but we got there, and now the bike is amazing so stick around to see how this thing performs all right before we swap to the new controller let's get some numbers on the stock one and see how it will compare now with the stock controller the e-ride pro has a peak power of about 12 kilowatts which is plenty for a bike like this any more than that man this thing will just do vertical takeoff okay three two one go here we go there's 40 mile an hour already god that's quick Moving on, Draghi is saying 52, 54. My dash is saying 61. All right, I think my top speed there was about 56 mile an hour, which is pretty quick. I am at about 80% battery. We'll do it one more time with the turbo mode turned on and we'll see how much quicker it is. Three, two, one, go. 2.290 zero to 30. <laughs> All right, one-eighth mile, 10 seconds. Pretty good, man. I'd say this is the uh, quickest e-bike in this class that I've ridden so far. Um, however, they did just announce the Suron Hyper B. So hopefully Suron will eventually start giving those out to people to test, even though they've never done that. Maybe they'll get a little bit wiser. Right then, today I'm gonna to be heading down to Costa Mesa. I'm gonna be visiting a buddy of mine named Harrison and he owns a place called Handleworks. Now, Handleworks is an awesome spot. They build specialized controllers for e-mopeds. However, he does have someone that works there who has experience with installing controllers on bikes like the Suron. Now, I've never installed a controller before and I'd much rather have someone who knows what they're doing show me how to do it rather than me just trying to figure it out because I'll just end badly. However, before I get to Handleworks, I'm gonna make a quick stop over at E-Ride because I think I have a bad battery. You do not want to install a new controller onto a bike that has a bad battery. Just a terrible idea. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully the install goes smoothly. On day one, we ran the E-Ride on Handleworks' dyno and found that it puts out around seven kilowatts of power to the wheel at 63% battery. However, once we got started with the install, we found that the kit that the controller came with did not have the correct harness for the version of E-Ride I had. We only had the harness for the 2.0 and as it turns out, I actually have the 1.0. Thankfully, Max had connections over at RevRides and they happened to have a 1.0 harness and stock to connect to the EBMX and they sent it over to me within a couple days. Shout out to RevRides, you came in clutch with this one. So once I got the new harness, I went back down to Handleworks the following week to finish the install. I would like to mention real quick that all the footage we got in the first day of filming unfortunately got corrupted on the SD card, so all the stuff I got at the E-Ride and the first day at Handleworks is no longer available. But I do want to give a big shout out to Justin at E-Ride. He hooked me up with a brand new battery, brand new tires, brand new rotors, new headlight, all kinds of stuff that I was not expecting to get. And yeah, man, much like Rev Rides, you really saved the project on this one. We'll not be able to do it without your help. So shout out to Justin at E-Ride. That's customer service if I've ever experienced it. Thank you. So with a fresh battery and the correct harness, we were able to successfully install the new controller. Max worked his magic and was able to get the whole thing installed with that little fuss, and I helped by staying the hell away and getting lunch. Once the controller was installed, we ran it on the dyno and found that even with a 60% battery, the bike was still able to push out 10 kilowatts to the wheel. So we have a, uh, we have a graph right here, and what it is basically showing is that with this new controller, I have what, twice the power? 50% uh, more power. 50% more power. And twice the torque. And twice the torque. So, and that's just a control. That's that's pretty amazing. So now, the moment you've all been waiting for. All right then, you guys, you guys are gonna like this. This thing is a, a completely different bike. I can't believe how much quicker it is now. Let's go. <laughs> Man, they were not kidding about this torque. It's got a new, new back tire on the rear, so I have a lot more traction. All right, set it up to level three. See what we got. Full pinned. <laughs> Never done a jump there before. God, I'm not even gonna commentate. I'm just gonna ride. You guys can see what a difference this is.
I have no idea how fast that was. <laughs> All right, I should probably say something now. Uh, as you guys can see, like I'm having a hard time keeping the front wheel down. That's how brutal this acceleration is. And also the, the other limitations of the bike, now like the tires, are starting to become more apparent. Ooh, I'm out of breath. One thing I would definitely upgrade, I, I have to upgrade now I have all this power, is gonna be the tires and rims. You know, it's, the problem with these skinny tires is that once you break traction, it's gone. So having a, a fatter, thicker rear tire is gonna accommodate this power perfectly. Woo! I also like how they cleaned up the trails now, so it's a, a lot easier to be aggressive with. It's crazy what one upgrade has done to this bike because keep in mind, I just upgraded the controller. The battery is stock, the motor is stock. I mean, a couple years ago to get your Saran to feel anything like this, you'd be dropping an extra five to $6,000. Whereas, you know, the controller is only $1,000 and it feels 50% more powerful than the stock controller. And it was already powerful. <laughs> That's a crazy thing. Yeah, definitely wanna wanna upgrade these tires because when you can put this thing in race mode three, it is fucking crazy. The other great thing about this controller is that not only is it really powerful, but it's super customizable. If you go inside the app, you can adjust pretty much every parameter imaginable that you can do with a controller on the app. And what I like most about it is that the app instantly connects to the controller. I had not had a single connection issue. That's, that sounds like a small detail, but the amount of times I've tried to Bluetooth my phone with some of these bikes, and it just doesn't, it never works. It never works correctly. This works flawlessly, not a single problem with it. All right, so we'll wrap up from my, uh, my high speed trail, if you will, and we'll head to my more technical one and see how this new power <laughs> handles. Oh no, looks like it's been flooded out. Man, that sucks. And I'm wearing my good worn-in work boots. Thankfully, this bike has a reverse mode now. <sighs> reverse mode is a real nice feature, man. I don't know why a lot of e-bikes, especially in this class, started dropping that feature. It's one of those things where you didn't realize you needed it until you got it. It's kind of like heated seats inside your car. Like, once you have it, you can't go back to not having it. <laughs> well, that sucks. Guess I won't be getting to that trail. I guess I'll just put it in three and see how it handles this uphill. All right, ready? Super loose there. Whoa. Shit. God, what a difference this made. I'm just spinning the back wheel <laughs> at that point. <laughs> I think that's the fastest I've ever climbed up that hill before. Yeah, overall, man, I'd say this controller is a huge improvement. The only challenging part is going to be getting it installed correctly. Uh, that's one thing I just don't have a lot of experience in, so I did have the help of my wonderful friend Max who was able to put this thing in and did a great job and calibrated it. Wouldn't be able to do this without you, man, so appreciate your help. You're awesome. I'd say overall the torque has dramatically improved. I mean, like, look how easily this thing wheelies now. It was already easy to wheelie to begin with, but now it's even more effortless, and I didn't even think that was possible. So even if you're not an off-road guy, Having this controller and that, and that ability to just pop that front wheel up, not even a quarter throttle, just crank it up super easily is uh, gonna be a huge advantage. I personally like to keep it around race one. Race three is just really aggressive. That's a lot of power. Race one I'm finding is just perfect because at any point you can just come and crank like that, and up it comes, like just beautiful, beautifully easy. All right then, before we end off, let's do a top speed and acceleration test. All right, everything's good to go. Race mode three. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Ah! God, that's... <laughs> two seconds! Zero to 30 in two seconds! Woo! That was fun. Okay, so my zero to 30 was two seconds. I don't remember what it was before on the stock controller, but that is... That is quick. I had all my weight over the front as well, and, the, and it was just picking up like that. You know, it's like riding a... Pissed off bull. All right, let's slow that down to race mode two, and we'll do it again. All right, three, two, one, go. All right, 2.42. Although I do think a lot of this acceleration test is gonna come down to how much, how much I'm able to control that front wheel coming up, because it is just, it's crazy how easy, like look at that. Easy.
So let's just say that maybe race mode's a little bit too much for you, right? Too much power, you can't handle it. Ah, just make it stop. What you, can, what you can do is hold the down button on this little adapter right here, and it will go into what's called street mode. Now in street mode, this bike is limited to about 25 mile an hour, and the torque feels like a 60 volt Sauron. It's just a lot slower. So say your buddy who thinks he's a great rider, but you know he's actually kind of crap at it, Put it in street mode and he's gonna be underwhelmed and never wanna ride your bike again. These are all just scenarios you may come across in the e-bike world. But as you can see in street one, gonna pin this thing, front it comes up a little bit, but it's nowhere near as talky or as responsive as it is in race mode. You can also use street mode to extend your range if that's what you're trying to do. And then uh, of course it's all broken up into three segments. So in street three, you know, the front will still come up nice and easy like that but it doesn't have the same torque curve. So, and again, you're still limited to about 25 mile an hour. Okay, before we end off, I just wanna jump into the app real quick and show you guys around. I'm not gonna do a full explanation on all the settings in this. I'm gonna leave that to eBMX Global. That's the main YouTube channel for this company and they do a great job walking you through how to install it, how to set it up for each individual bike, going through every single detail of the app. They do a great job. So head over there if you wanna know more. If you pick one of these up, that's the place you wanna go. First thing you wanna do is is get a moto stand to put this on because you're gonna to wanna to do a calibration setup. So if we jump into settings, head over to general. This is where you wanna start. You wanna make sure you select what bike, the type of motor you have, battery series, all that stuff you wanna make sure you put this information in there and then hit save and it'll do a calibration. Also what you wanna do if you put new wheels and tires and gears on here is put that into the app as well and rerun the calibration. That way it compensates for the new upgrades you just put on the bike. Also make sure your motor direction is set to anti-clockwise. Unless you want 17 kilowatts of power to go backwards, which I doubt you do. You'll also obviously wanna do a controller calibration as well. That'll just require you twisting the throttle a couple times to make sure that you know, the controller knows where it's at, what it's doing, and who it's talking to and all that. Now the fun part of this app is obviously in the throttle settings. Now what ramping time is, is basically when you want all the power to come on. Now, I have mine currently set at 50 milliseconds. Some people like it a little bit lower. The more you increase it, the slower the throttle curve is gonna come on. Now, I already like how this is currently set up. It's very close to the stock controller on the e -Ride Pro SS, which I love the throttle curve on that, so I'm leaving all that alone. Uh, negative time ramping, that is, the, th when you roll off the throttle, there is gonna be like a slight delay or a slight lag. If you have no delay at all, it feels a little unnatural, especially if you're coming from a motorcycle like myself, and having too much feels broken. <laughs> so again, leave that at 10 milliseconds. Input deadband, this is an interesting one and one that I never thought about. Basically what that does is that it will give you a little delay between your current throttle input. So say you're going over some whoops or riding some off-road trails and your throttle and your hand is doing a bit of that, it's not going to measure those actual inputs. You're gonna to have to make a more of a dramatic input on the throttle for the controller to actually give you more or less power. If that made no sense to you, that's okay. I'm also pretty stupid. Throttle Expo mode, I currently have that on natural. Polynomial is what the guys at EVMX recommend using. And, and, th and Throttle Expo is basically your, and Throttle Expo is pretty much your torque curve, uh, which is probably the most important one to get right. Coming over to the mode sections, you have race and you have street. All of this stuff I'm gonna leave alone. Again, I already like how this thing feels set up, although the reverse strength is currently on 100. I don't know why it's back there, but I don't know. I'm gonna do 50 mile an hour backwards, I guess. However, it is saying that my motor temp is minus 99 degrees Celsius, which is highly unlikely. Anyway, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. There's gonna be a link down below if you wanna pick this controller up, which I definitely recommend doing. It is an awesome piece of equipment. Thanks for watching.